Yo, what up? How's it going? And welcome back for another video. In today's video, I will be showing you guys a position guide for TFT set six. This is going to be for every single unit. Now, um, if you guys had already watched, I made a unit guide video. So just a general overview of every single unit for beginners. I made it at the very beginning of set while we were still in PBE. I have played 300 games since then. Um, so even if you watch that video, this is going to be kind of an updated version of the unit guide video, just specifically talking about positioning. Um, I've played about 300 games since then, and I picked up some tricks. So I'll be I'll be talking about default positioning as well as um, some tricks on certain units. A lot of units have very basic positioning that, like you know, especially the cheaper units, like you know, you just toss them in the middle and you're good to go. But some of the units do, do have some really unique interactions that um, I bet a lot of you guys are not utilizing. So let's just get right into it. If you're looking at my board, I just have some units put on the board just to kind of give a, like visualize a team. So whenever I put a unit up there to show where they should be, um, it should make sense. I won't put all the units up here to show them uh, just cause some of them are really simple. All right, let's, let's get it started. Let's just go. We're gonna go through every single unit. All right, Caitlin, you just want her back line in the corner. Make sure you don't get hooked by blitz and you're good to go. No, nothing else to talk about there. Uh, Camille, you either want her to main tank or top, top to the side. So let's get Camille in here. So Braum is in the main tank position. You just put him, you just put your main tank wherever it makes sense. Like you put him directly in front of your team or in the center just to defend your back line. That's the point. That's what I mean by main tanking. Um, okay, so you can main tank Camille, like so put him where Braum is, or you can put Camille all the way to one side in the early game, keep all of your units on the same side, because what you will be doing is you'll be funneling, if the enemy is on the opposite side, they'll be funneling into your Camille so you can get more value from her leg sweep, and she's also gonna protect your back line if you have them all on this side. If they're directly in front of you, um, she'll also get value from her leg sweep because the units will be right in front of her, funneling right into if she's main tanking. Like let's say you put your other frontline units right here, um, so you can main tanker or main tanker to the top, to the side it can be very nice. Uh, Darius, uh, Darius, you just put him dead center. You wanted to main tank in front of your team. Um, or if you like want to put him over here, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, you just want him in main tank position. Um, cool. Ezreal, just put him on the back line. Uh, make sure he doesn't get hooked by bullets if you're carrying him. Uh, Garen, you want him to front line, but not main tank, uh, typically, because Garen is a decent source of damage in the early game. So, for example, if you're playing protectors, the main tank and protector comp is Castle Win. So, imagine this is Castle Win right here. Um, you just put Garen in the front line to the side. You don't want him main tanking. You don't want him in front of the carries. You'd rather cast it in, take that position. Uh, but you do want him to take some damage because he is pretty tanky. You want him to take some of the tanky, some of the damage from the enemy team, but you don't want him to be main tank because he is actually a decent source of damage, especially if you want to itemize him in the early game. Okay, Graves. Um, Graves is in front of strong units. So if you're scouting around and you see that some people are carrying a frontline carry in the early game, like maybe they're carrying a Garen or something, you just want your Graves in front of their carry or at the very least on the same side as their backline DPS. Um, or you can just center him to get maximum value and have him kind of like pseudo main tank, even though he's not really that tanky. Um, but you just wanna make use of his CC on important units in the early game when you're playing him. And in the late game, um, the same idea. If you're going to reroll him or whatever. Alawi, position her as a main tank or just on front line. She's a pretty useless unit, honestly, but uh, can be a decent main tank. Uh, for like stage two, stage three. Um, Castle win, uh, you want him to main tank or in front of important units because he does have that mana reeve effect on his ability. Uh, so yeah, just either main tank or in front of the, uh, important units on the enemy. Um, cool, Poppy, front line, N nothing to say about that. Poppy, front line, main tank, side tank, whatever. Whatever makes sense. Uh, singed in front of enemy main tank. So you usually want to position uh, your singed based off of what other people are doing. So let's say you're playing singed. Um, Singed does an amazing thing that he, like, let's say the enemy has, like, let's say you actually, like, rerolled a Warwick or something, and uh, you're in late game, and your Warwick is your carry, right? And the enemy has a Braum that has, like, Bramble Vest, Warmogs. Like, I'm never going to get through him with my Warwick. I want to make sure my Warwick does not get stuck on that Braum, so, or my backline DPS, whoever I'm carrying. So what I want to do is I want to put my Singed in a position where he is most likely to grab their tank and toss him to the back line um, to help uh, my team not get stuck on him. That can honestly be the difference between winning a round and taking a 15 health loss is Singed position if he's in your late game board. Um, in an early game, it's also very important as well. Um, so ja, so ja, ja, ja. It just, in, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Just in front of, uh, in front of enemy main tank. Okay, uh, TF. Uh, TF has some unique positioning actually for one cost. 
Um, okay, so I'll show you guys a couple spots where TF has pretty good positioning. Um, TF is fine, just back line, um, but not in the corner. He has three hex range. So he is fine in the back line if that's what you want to do, especially if you're like clumping in the early game and, and you put him where Jen is. Like I, I'm, I'm visualizing him where Jen is right now. Um, that is fine. Um, if not, this is a pretty decent position as well. If you don't know where to go, um, third row, dead center, you're going to get a lot of value from his cards. Um, but a really good strategy is, especially in the early game, put all of your units to one side and put TF in the second row. Because what will happen is, just like the Camille thing, if the enemy is right in front of your team, you're going to get such good value from TF. So the way that TF works is he throws his cards and they get the distance spreads as it goes. So the further you are, or the further you're away from the enemy, the more variance there is in your in your ability cast. So if you're able to be as close as possible to the enemy, um, you will get some massive value um, from TF because he'll be so close, he'll be more likely to hit uh, more enemies. Uh, so yeah, second rowing in this pocket or in this cubby over here is really good or in this cubby right here is usually pretty good. Um, you can funnel people in. If they're right in front of you, you'll get massive value. If they're on the other side, they're gonna funnel in this way and you can get value from this angle. Uh, so. Uh, usually my default positioning for TF is dead center if I don't know where to go or on, or on the side second row or in a pocket. Occasionally I will frontline my TF if I have like syndicate and I have like a blue buff um, so that I can get maximum value because he'll just be healing himself with syndicate. So um, yeah, TF is one of the very few one costs that actually has unique positioning. Okay, Twitch. Um, Twitch, I just like to position him on middle three hexes. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So any of these. Any of these, or any of these, or any of these, or any of these. Um, usually you put them on middle, somewhere in the middle, um, and then you can favor one side to get closer to their carries. Because the way that Twitch's ability works is it doesn't pale. So you want you don't want to be right in front of their carry. So like if you do corner and they're like corner stacking like this on the opposite side, you're gonna jump back there and you're gonna just you're just gonna be hitting one of these three. But if you jump to the back line and you're right here and you target Ori right on the, on the enemy team, right? then you're hitting all three of these and you're getting a lot of value off of your ability cast. Um, so that's why you typically want them there. And you don't want him to be like, after your fault liner dies, you don't want him to be tanking. So like if you had another assassin like Echo, you could have Echo land right here so that um, your Twitch can start hitting these stuff. And whenever your Braum dies, um, your Echo will start to tank so your Twitch can get more value. You see what I'm saying? Um, cool, anyway, so yeah, that's how you position Twitch. All right, Ziggs, backline, nothing nothing special there. All right, Blitz, uh, you just want opposite side of enemy carry. Also, you can do Blitz near your carry. So let's say you're running Blitz in this comp for whatever reason. Um, oh, you would if you're running Scion and Braum. Um, cool, something that you can do, um, you don't typically do this in the late game. Uh, this is more of an early game strat. So in the early game, you could put your Blitz next to your carry because it basically, even, even if, you're, it, this is especially important if you're running a weak board, it basically guarantees you're going to kill one unit because people are going to have corner bait and they're going to put a squishy unit in the corner usually, or maybe they'll put a tank. That's fine. But a lot of times they put like their least important backliner in the corner in the early game. Uh, so let's say they have like, they're carrying like uh, a TF. So they'll put their zigs in the corner, right? Um, you pull a zigs, you CC the zigs and your backliner can kill them. Even like a one star Ezreal can like kill, kill them uh, before the fight ends. So uh, yeah, positioning blitz near your carry can guarantee that you get a kill um, in the early game. Other than that, yeah, you just put opposite side of their carry. One thing you don't want to do is put Blitz on the opposite side of your team when you have nobody to deal damage to the person that Blitz hooks. Because basically what will happen is Blitz just gives them mana. Um, because he'll pull them, he'll knock them up. I mean, the CC at the beginning of the fight is nice, but then the rest of the fight, he's just going to be autoing them. Whoops. Autoing them, delivering them mana. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you if you hook a target with Blitz, you want to be able to kill them, um, or Blitz is just delivering them mana. So either buy your carry in the early game, um, and then the late game just opposite side of enemy carry, or just front line, that's fine. Uh, but remember, you want to make sure you can kill the target that Blitz hooks. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, Kat, honestly anywhere. Um, Katarina, honestly, can put her anywhere. Um, Katarina does really well if you have a secondary carry, like let's say you have like a three-star Talon with some good items, or, or Shaco, whatever. Um, you know, you put her here, 
Talon jumps back there, he hits somebody, he damages them, and then Cat finishes them off. So it really doesn't matter where you position Cat, um, but it's good to have a secondary carry with Katarina so she can uh, they can deal the damage she can execute. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you just don't want her to get CC'd. All right, Cog, backline, nothing really to talk about there. Lulu, next year carry, usually third hex. So this hex that um, Oriana is in, that's a good spot for Lulu. She has three hex range, as well as she does have kind of like a protector ability where, uh, not the protector synergy, but like, you know, if somebody jumps your, like a Talon jumps your backline and he starts hitting Lulu, um, Lulu will knock them up, do basically an interrupt, and will tank a lot of hits for your backline DPS. Um, especially if you have like a, you know, like a Leona here and then you put a Lulu there, or Lulu here, um, and they ended up tanking, or your Leona tanks and then your Lulu tanks, it buys a lot of time, you know what I mean? Um, cool, so you want them to be like tanking the, tank, you want her to be like tanking the assassins, and you don't want her in the corner unless you want her to get hooked by Blitz, uh, just because she's three hex range. Um, cool. Um, Quinn, just put her in the back line. Nothing, nothing really important there. Uh, Swain, you can main tank or side tank to the side. So as we talked about before, uh, where's Swain? Uh, you can funnel people in to get maximum value from his ability, or if they position in front of you, then he just shoots straight, and you can, um, if the third row, you can hit the back line, um, or as soon as you kill the front line, you can get to the back line. So position them like how you position like set um, and last set. You guys put last set. Um, cool. Um, Talon, just put him in the corner. You want Talon to kind of like have an isolated target and just beat their ass. Um, uh, Talon, Talon is so good at just like making sure you kill a unit, especially in the early game because he his ability instantly casts, right? Because um, he gets the proc on his first auto attack on an enemy. Um, so yeah, so you just want them to put him in the corner in front of the enemy um, or in front of a socialite hex or something like that um, where everyone is positioning. That's where you want to put him. Um, okay, cool. Tristana, just put her in the back line. Not really important. Just same as Jin's positioning here. Uh, Trundle, uh, you just don't want him to main tank. Uh, so this is going to be what I talk about a lot of frontline DPSs. You either want him second row or front to the side, not in front of their carries. Especially Trundle, you want him to scale um, throughout the fight. So yeah, you don't want him there. Uh, Vi, okay, Vi, um, Vi actually has some cool positioning. So let's say you're playing Trundle. Let's say you're playing Trundle. You want to position like Vi kind of like this, right? Or maybe second row your Trundle, whatever. Uh, but you just want Vi near your Trundle to the side to get maximum value because she does armor shred with her denting blows, right? Um, and so you just want to armor shred for Trundle uh, if you're playing like a Trundle carry build. Um, alternatively, if you end up playing Vi in your late game build, uh, you want to have Vi in front of your AD carry. So let's say Jin is here. Jin's going to be targeting whoever's right here. Vi is also going to be targeting the same person. Vi can shred armor. So boom, bam, boom. Um, that is some really uh, nice positioning to do here. It can help you get through some tanks. Um, and yeah, so this is a little bit of positioning tip that you can add to your game right there for sure. That can help you win rounds. Uh, Warwick, you just want him to not be main tank away from enemy tanks. So same rules as Trundle, right? First row, second row, to the side, whatever. You, just, you want him to scale throughout a fight, right? Uh, Zillion, he has some unique positioning as well. Okay, Zillion can be some very good corner bait for Blitz. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this in your games. You've hooked a Zillion, Zillion gets hooked, and then he CCs your backline and lowers your attack speed. Zillion's bomb, when it explodes, lowers the attack speed of everyone hit. It doesn't just do the CC. So he is very good corner bait. So imagine my team is just over here and I don't have Seraphine here. Um, very good corner bait for Blitz. He gets, he gets hooked and then you CC their backline. Very nice. Um, the other thing that he can do if you're running like a Singed, right? Uh, you can do a ball delivery system. You can have you can have Zillion right behind the Singed. And so if it if it, it doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, it's pretty cool. Um, if Zillian throws a bomb on a frontliner and then Singed throws the frontliner and the bomb explodes on the backline, you will get the attack speed nerf on the enemy backline. So that is a, that is a little trick because these units uh, work together as well a lot because they're both innovators. See, look, we're an innovator. Um, and then is there anything else? Uh, oh, and then the other thing is like you can just put him next to carry, next to the carry, like where Oriana is, right? You can just put him here. Uh, because it, because when assassins jump your backline, same idea as Lulu, they jump, they start hitting your Zillion, then he CCs. Or maybe they hit your tank, but then Zillion uh, gets enough mana and then he'll he'll CC the uh, assassin. So really get to protect your carry, really get a it's blitz bait, and then and um can uh, do the ball delivery thing. Uh, but that usually doesn't work. Um, that doesn't work all the time, but it is cool when it happens. Uh, Zyra backline, you can also corner bait Zyra. You know, you know, be careful with this. I mean, if you need a corner bait, like she's, you know, like sometimes you just need a unit to die so that your carry can carry, right? Corner bait for Blitz. Uh, but she's a pretty decent corner bait because she has a really high mana cost and her her spell is pretty impactful. So a lot of times I'll corner bait Zyra, especially if I'm playing Syndicates in the early game because she'll get hooked. She'll instantly get the Syndicate buff because she's going to get low really fast, right? So she gets it to resist 
And that usually makes her tanky enough to get her cast off. And she gets a really early cast off that can really change a fight. So I like corner baiting her, but other than that, just backline. Um, if you're carrying her, definitely don't corner bait her. Um, Cho'Gath, main tank. Um, Echo, pos Echo positioning doesn't matter at all unless you just want to position, like, you know, like I said with Twitch, is you can position him in a way to where um, he ends up tanking for your Twitch after your main tank is dead. Uh, but other than that, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, Heimerdinger, uh, backline, second or third hex. So uh, usually here or here is good uh, just because he is three hex range. So you don't usually want to put him in the corner. Um, you just want to be able to get in the action because normally he does have to walk to here anyways. You can also just third row him if you want to. Uh, but usually I just like putting him here and then putting some units to protect him around here to protect him from assassins, especially in meta, uh, especially when assassins are meta. Um, cool. All right, Leona, main tank. All right, Leona has some special special stuff. All right, Leona, you can main tank her like Braum right here, right? Um, you can put her, put her next to your main tank because she does make your units more tanky uh, whenever she casts. So you can put next to the main tank or you can also put her as the backline bodyguard to protect your team. If you don't know, bodyguards taunt um, at the beginning of a fight. So if assassins jump and she taunts, very good. Also, I like to put Leona, even if you do end up frontlining her like this, I like to put Leona right here or right here a lot of times too. Like, let's say like this is where my backline is, right? So if you just backline uh, tank, like backline bodyguard like this and, and assassins jump, obvious what's going to happen, right? Um, if you end up like putting your team like this, I like positioning like this a lot of times. If you end up positioning your team like this and they're not assassins, but they have a frontline just right, right up here and your team doesn't move, if Leona casts from this position, it actually hits your backline. So it actually gives your backline those resists. I have won so many fights from this. Like my Leona has cast, given my backline uh, magic resist, and then I survived a Luxol, right? Um, so that is some really uh, underutilized position I don't see by a lot of players. So uh, really think about that. You can just push your backline back one row or, or put her defensively for your backline. And if she gets that cast on your backline, actually it really helps out a lot. So um, yeah. Anyways, I, I I really like Leona. I think she's a very good unit. Um, cool. Um, Lissandra, you just want her either front center, if you don't know where to position her, uh, third row center, second row center, or in front of their carry. So if they're playing like Yone, Fiora, very important to have her in front um, because that can like really buy you a lot of time. Or if they're playing Urgot, because Urgot has to walk up to the third hex um, to, to do battle a lot of times. Um, so in front of Urgot, Fiora, or Yone, um, or whoever is an AD frontliner, um, or just center front, um, second row front, third row front, um, as default position if you don't know where to go. But yeah, typically you just want to be in front of a short range AD carry. It's going to give you a lot of value. Or if you don't know default, just center. All right, Malzahar, uh, backline, uh, just... Just try to dodge uh, some main tanks. Uh, some really unique positioning, uh, some really cool interaction that I don't think a lot of people utilize correctly. If you're playing a Blitzcrank in your Malzahar build, if you put Blitzcrank on the same side as your Malzahar, Blitzcrank's gonna pull a squishy unit. And if Malzahar gets his cast off on that squishy unit, that is a free bounce, right? Because Malzahar is gonna kill a backliner when he casts, right? If you're carrying a Malzahar, Malzahar he's 100% gonna kill whoever Blitz hooks. So that can give you a free bounce so you don't get stuck on a tank. So I really like positioning Blitz in front of my Malzahar if you're frontlining your Blitz or just like this, you know what I mean? Um, because you can get a free kill at the very beginning of a fight with Malzahar and a free bounce. So you can get you can start double stacking really early. Okay, Misfortune. Misfortune, you just put her in the back line. Um, but here's some also important stuff. Um, Misfortune, you don't want her to walk too much. Um, and you want to be able to hit their uh, DPS. So if they're running a frontline DPS or an Urgot or something like that, you know, short range DPS, uh, you want her on the same side. So if they're on this side, you want her on this side as well so she can hit them. Uh, something that's really cool that you can do if you have a Zac, position Zac on the same side as uh, Misfortune because Zac will clump enemies together um, and he does go maximum range that he can. It's like a three hex range. Um, so if they have like an Urgot, he'll pull the Urgot into MF's ult range so you don't so uh, you can actually start damaging them or will all or will pull like a real backline dps if he's if he's somehow in range if you get if you get close enough um so yeah so mf backline in front of zach or in front of the enemy uh enemy team comp because you do not want her to walk too much you want to get maximum value on first cast okay cool um samira you can just backline third hex like heimerdinger she has three hex range you can also go here you know you can go third row if you want to or just wherever socialite hex is um, also, you can go second row, you know, you can position her like Urgot, you know, um, which we'll talk about later. Um, if you're running her as, if this is if you're carrying her, if you're running her as a utility unit, so you're like, 
you're carrying a Yone and Fiora. Let's do this. She can actually be a utility unit. <clears throat> Where's Yone? Okay, let's say you're running like Challenger Vertical, right? You're running like six or eight Challenger, whatever. Um, you can position Samira right here because you're not itemizing her. You don't care about her as a carry. You can position her here and she will do her blade instead of her gun and she will shred all the enemies in front of her of their uh of their armor and so a lot of times she'll cast twice because she's really low mana so she'll cast and then she'll get hit again and then she'll cast so she'll double shred and can really help out your yona and fiora get a lot of damage off even though fiora does a lot of true damage you can really help them get it off so either backline her third hex like heimerdinger third rower you can cubby her um social right hex her or as you're playing as utility next to Yone and Fiora or behind Yone and Fiora to get the shred, uh, however you want to do it. Um, cool. Where are we at? Um, we are in, we are at Shaco. Uh, Shaco, just like Talon, corner in front of Socialite or on the Socialite. It's kind of hard to do the Socialite because you want him to be in front of their Socialite, right? Um, but yeah, you just want him to get some, get some kills off at the beginning of the fight. Kill some high value targets. <laughs> Tarek, just frontline, main tank or side tank. Nothing special about Tarek. Vex, going to be main tank and Arcanist and Yordles. So just position like a main tank. Zach, you want to side tank in front of carry. So like I just talked about with MF, like let's say you're playing Zach with Jen. You don't usually do that, but let's say you are. Um, you just want him on the same side as your carry. And you can also utilize this uh, second row uh, tank positioning because what Zach will do, let's say an assassin jumps your back line. If you position Zach in front of your carry, um, the assassin will be right here, right? Which is in Zach's um, hex range. And so he will grab that assassin and, and toss them back up here. So positioning Zach in front of your carry, very important. So like if you're playing like an Urgot, position Zach right here could be very good. And if you're playing like a true backliner, like Jin or something like that, you can do this third, second row positioning uh, to ensure that you get the value. It uh, can be very good. Uh, Zach is a unit that you actually do have to position. Uh, Braum, main tank or in front of... Uh, like the enemy DPS. So if they're running like Yone, you just want him right in front of the Yone because he does, uh, uh, he does whenever he does his knock up, he does knock up everyone within one hex range around here, right? It might be two hex range actually. Um, I can't, I'm not really, I can't really remember, but like if you, if they're right in front of them or within one hex, they will for sure knock them up. Uh, but other than that, he does, he does ult at an angle versus where his target is. So if the enemy has their backline on the opposite side, like same side, but you know, opposite, opposite grid, right? But they're on left side from our point of view. Jesus. Um, and they have all their tanks on one side. You can angle Braum in a way to where he's going to look towards their back line. Uh, but you can't always do this, and it is 50-50 sometimes. But um, yeah, if they have a frontline DPS or like an Urgot or something, just push them, put them right in front of their carry and you can usually hit them. Um, and if not, try to angle it in a way to hit their back line. Uh, but other than that, if you don't know what a position, just default center of the map, you're gonna be good to go. Um, cool. Mundo, position like a main tank. Um, nothing special about that. He's just a ball of stats. Uh, Fiora, frontline to the side. So essentially, you want to position her like kind of like Warwick, kind of like all them. If you're carrying your Fiora and you don't have a GA, um, sometimes it's good to second row. She does de aggro, but she can just get like CC'd and insta die at the beginning of a fight. That does happen. But if you have like a GA or something like that, you can like totally just like put her right in front of the carry to just start, uh, start popping off as early as possible. She does de aggro. So, but you do just position her like a frontline carry, like uh, second row or, you know, like to the side, away from the main tank, um, away from the enemy carry so that she can scale throughout a fight, especially if, especially if you have scaling items because she can live a very long time. Um, cool. But yeah, just position her like a frontline carry. Uh, Janna. Janna has a lot of different positionings. Um, you can position her right here, right? You can position her next to your carry to knock assassins away. Position her right here to get a little bit of value of CC in the front line. Position her second row to CC frontline and any assassins that would jump here, right? Her heal is global, so you don't have to position for her heal. This is just for CC. You can also, if you really want her cast to get off early and you want to push some enemies away and you want to, get, want to CC their frontline a little bit, um, especially if they're running like challengers or something like that, and you, you can get a lot of value from knocking them away from your team. Um, you can position her on frontline, but default position if you don't know where to go, um, usually next to your carry, right in front of your carry, or center of the map, or center of the map, right? Um, but yeah, niche scenarios, you can put her up here um, and, and put her second row and stuff like that. So uh, just know that. Um, cool. Jen, you know, you just position him like a carry. Corner, make sure he doesn't get blitz hooked and, or put him on the social hex um, and defend him. That's all you need to do. Um, you know, make sure, make sure your tanks are tanking for him and, and doing all the appropriate stuff that we said tanks should do. Uh, 
Uh, Lux, corner, opposite side of enemy. So same idea, make sure you protect your gen or make sure you protect your Lux, but opposite side of enemy carry and, or on social hex if the social hex is really good. Um, Ori, uh, honestly, you can position Ori wherever you want. Um, if she's a carry, then you position her like a carry, protect her, all that good stuff. You can corner bait her, especially if you have GA, uh, because like getting her cast off at the beginning of the fight can be really important. Um, you can also like, you can also like second row her to where she takes a little bit of splash damage, or or cubby her to where she takes a little bit of splash damage, so she does cast a little early, earlier. But uh, Frontline Ori isn't as good because they buffed her mana cast or her mana cost. They made her mana cost a lot lower, so she's actually pretty good as like a carry or a side carry and just position her like a normal backliner. But you know, if you really do want to get your cast off early, early, you can second or third row her, um, so she takes a little bit of damage. Whoops. Uh, where's Ori? Ori, 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 Ori. Okay, get back in there. Oh, I also took Braum off here. Whoops. Um, okay, cool. Um, where are we at? Seraphine, uh, corner next to carry. So she's really good in the corner because whenever she casts, if you don't know, Seraphine will heal um, an ally that is within one hex range um, into the direction she's going. So if you position her in the corner, she will always cast this direction, right? Or she'll cast straight, which will always heal your gen. Um, so yeah, just usually in the corner next to your carry is where you're good to go. Or if she's actually your carry, then position her like a carry, you know. Um, cool. And behind your team. So you usually want to put all of, you usually want to clump your team like in front of like like if you're clumping center, then she's always going to get value, right? So yeah. Um, if, if you like really want value from your Seraphine. Okay, Scion main tank or to the side in front of the enemy. So let's say the enemy is mirroring us on the opposite side, playing a Scion. You can main tank if you don't know where to go, gonna get a lot of value. Or you can do like all the way on the front to the side and maybe you have like a Braum and a, and a Blitz so you have other tanks you don't need in a main tank. Then he can get a lot of value from like hitting the entire team this way. Um, or it, you know, if you wanna funnel them in, then he can hit the entire team this way. Um, cool, because he does have smart targeting. Um, so yeah, in general, you just main tank him or just put him front to the side in front of the enemy team. Okay, cool. Um, Urgot, uh, Urgot has some special positioning. Let's do Urgot. I'm looking at my notes, by the way, and I'll have the I'll have the notes uh, in the comment section. Um, okay, so Urgot, you typically want to third row him, or you want to position him third hex or second hex because he has three. He's like the Draven of this set. He has three hex range, right? You can cubby him. Um, just make sure your tanks are in front of him and Zach is in front of him, right? You can cubby him, or you can second row him on cubby or on opposite side um, if you have like Knives Edge or something like that. But typically, you want to third row cubby him or backline center or backline second hex, right? It's typically where you want to put him and just make sure your Zach and your tanks and he's protected from assassins, right? Um, that's what you need to need to do. Um, Urgot's a little special because he is like the Draven of the set. Okay, Yone, you just position him like a frontline carry. So Yone, um, you know, you can frontline or you can second row him. If you have GA, it's pretty easy to frontline him um, or just put him on social hex and you're good to go. Um, cool, Akali. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, you just want to make sure, especially when you get into those late game fights, that you're at a good angle. So if you don't know, Akali's targeting is that she will go to the biggest clump of enemies. So if they're running like a backline clump, let's say they're running like a sniper, um, then if they're running like a sniper clump, like their whole backline is basically filled, right? Because they're running like a bunch of enchanters and stuff. You don't want her to jump to the center because then she's going to jump and hit this clump, right? But let's say like this whole backline is filled and she will jump down here and then she will, or she'll jump down here and then she'll go this way, right? Or she'll jump down here and she'll go this way. Um, you want her to just hit all of them, right? So you want her to jump down here and then go this way and all, hit all of them and tag them. Um, or alternatively, if they're running a, a bunch of frontliners, same idea. You want her to jump, you want her to jump to where uh, she is like at a good angle. Let's say that all their frontline is there and then she'll start hitting and then she'll cast, right? And she'll go through this way. You just don't want her in like the center of the clump whenever she jumps um, because you want her to get most of the value as you can. Also, a Akali sometimes will, um, like if it's a frontline clump, you can just like jump to the center of their backline because sometimes she will like kind of get in here a little bit and will and will hit some of the backliners on her way up. You just want to make sure she's at a good angle for her first cast. After that, you know, the fights are really RNG with Akali. So um, Galio, just main tank him. Or if you're playing Clapio, then you just, you still you can still position him like a main tank because you want him to cast, uh, but you want like other other people to take some of the tank burden from him, or you just put him on social hex, right? Um, cool. Uh, Jace, you either main tank if you're frontlining Jace, or just on same row as DPS. If you're playing him as a DPS, um, which I've seen a lot of people do lately, um, you just position him like 
a DP, a backline DPS, right? He is five hex range. So um, yeah, you position him the same way you position Jen, um, or you just put him on the back row. So if you're playing him with a Jen and you want him to buff your Jen, you can literally put him wherever you want. Um, doesn't matter. You can put him to protect him if you want to, um, but you just want him to cast for your backliners. Um, if you're not carrying him, if you're just playing him as utility, um, cool. But if not, you just main tank him. Uh, cool. Jinx. So just safe backline position. Same idea as Jen, right? Um, or you can alternatively, if you have GA, which GA is a really good item on her, um, you can frontline her if you want to. If you want her to cast like really early on in the fight, you can frontline Jinx with a GA. Um, if you guys played set four, if, if you guys haven't played like set four, that was really when like frontlining GA on carriage was like a really big deal. Um, I don't think in set five, there was ever really a patch where that was like a huge thing. Um, I'm not counting Morgana as a carry. Um, <clears throat> But you could frontline your uh, carry with the GA. I mean, I think you could do Draven patches, but this is a different idea. Um, so that you just get that massive cast at the very beginning of the fight it can be really huge. Um, so think about that. But, you know, in general, just default to like a safe position. Uh, Kaisa, same position as Urgot. She's three hex range. So Cubby, uh, Cubby, backline middle, backline second hex or, uh, or second row if you want to. Um, TK, just in front of important units, um, you know, because you want him to get eat somebody or if you're trying to farm gold you can put them in front of weak units you know that's a idea like on stage four if you want them to just farm some gold for you um you can put them in front of weak units but if not you put them in front of important units and just make sure you dodge the colossus because he cannot cc colossus um cool um unless you like if you have crazy damage on him and they're carrying their colossus then you can put them in front. I, I had a game last night where i intentionally put my tom kench in front of their galio because they were carrying galio and my tom kench was dealing like 5k with his <laughs> if he actually ate them so he's dealing like 2k uh, just with his lick and I blew buff on him. So I was just having him lick him to death. So it was pretty fun. Uh, but in general, yeah, you just want to dodge the Colossus and put him in front of uh, their main tank. Um, cool. Uh, Vigar, just safe backline positioning. Victor, um, socialite, safe backline. And also he's one of those ones where you can frontline with the GA if he has like some really high damage items or, you know, or you just really want him to get his cast off at the beginning of the fight. Um, that can be that can be an angle as well. I've seen some people do it. I've lost to a guy last night who was playing the frontline Victor um, in a really smart um, it was like really smart of him to run it in that situation. Okay, Yumi, you just want him, want to put Yumi next to your most important unit. So if you're carrying a Jin and like Jin is all of your damage, you just want to put a Yumi there. And whenever you move Yumi, whenever you like set her down, it'll tell you um, who she is, uh, who she is linked to. Um, so like sometimes you put it here and it'll say it's linked to Seraphine. So you move it here, it's linked to Jin, or it might still say linked to Ori. So you move Ori over one, and cool, you're linked to Jin now. Um, cool. So just just be mindful of that whenever you're using her. Um, and then also, if you have a unit, if your carry has a QSS and they're like attack speed based, like let's say you're playing like Yone and you're playing like six challenger and he has a QSS, it is so OP because she'll get her cast off like really fast in the fight. So if you have a QSS attack speed based unit, um, she's really good to be paired with them. Other than that, just yeah, on, on your carry or you can put it on frontline if you're, if you know your carry is going to be safe, you just want to buy more time. Uh, you can also put her on frontline to uh, buy more time for your frontline frontline carry. Um, cool. All right, that is it, guys. I tried to make this one uh, not too long. It's only thirty minutes long. Last time I made this video, it was an hour long, but I was I was talking about all the abilities and everything too. Um, so yeah, so these are some of my positioning tricks and stuff that I've learned after playing three hundred or so games. I um, hope you guys learned something. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to uh, see what you guys have to say, and, and I reply back to almost every single comment. Um, that I can. So, uh, so yeah, I appreciate that. And if you guys want to follow me over at Twitch, I stream about five days a week. I have been on a little bit of a break um, for a little bit of a break just during December and for the holidays and, and, and a bunch of stuff. So, uh, but typically I stream about five days a week at twitch.tv slash TFT. I also upload TikToks all the time at tiktok.com slash at TFT. So if you guys like TikTok, you can follow me over there. If not, I post them on YouTube as well as YouTube shorts. And then also I post pretty much every day on twitter.com slash Trajan TFT. I'd love to see you guys on any of my other socials. It would help me out a lot. But if not, I appreciate that you're here. If you, and, and, and especially if you like, like the video or comment, that just helps me out a ton. And I appreciate all of you guys. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys learned something in this video. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good night, a good day, wherever you are. I just hope you're doing well. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye. See ya.